I have a pretty darn interesting video for you guys today. I went bonkers and I bought my own dyno, believe it or not, uh, but there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, my dyno fits in this little box over here. So this is a Orterra dyno scan tool. So I'll, in this video, I'll be going through basically setting it up, doing our first dyno pool on this car, but I know what you guys are gonna say. These kind of OBD dyno tools, they do not work. And you know, you're probably 100% right. They probably rubbish, gotta throw them in the bin, but you can't tell me it's pretty awesome to get like an estimated idea of how strong your car actually is. So while we're gonna set it up, I'm gonna show you guys a lot of different kind of settings you have to put in it to give you more and better accurate data. So you gotta put stuff in like your elevation. Uh, you gotta put in your humidity, your drag coefficient, you gotta put on your weight and everything. It takes all of those things in consideration when you're gonna do your pull. So technically this tool can be used on the road. Obviously you guys gotta make sure you're on a safe road. And then also you can actually put it on an actual dyno and use this tool as well, which makes it pretty darn cool. But obviously most of the dynos, well I wouldn't say you can put it on a dyno, basically just on rollers because the dyno includes the rollers. But whatever, we're gonna quickly jump into it and setting this uh, dyno tool up with the car, gonna put in all the settings stuff once again this is going to be technically a how-to video of how to set it up going through how to do your dyno test on the software and everything and then how to actually do your pool as well so we're going to do the full story it's going to be a full guide it's not just going to be uh, going on the road testing it and going to leave a bunch of info out for you guys so yeah let's quickly jump into it I can basically imagine that all the software for all of these OBD Dyno tools, they work technically the same. So for this Otero, we're going to go through all the basic things. Uh, so if you're also going to get Otero, already have one, you know how to set it up and everything. If you're going to use a different kind of software or tool, you're going to have like an idea of what to actually do. Okay, so right over here, this is our just like a fresh start. This is where we went into. So the first thing is you're on the left hand side. You've got like a bunch of scan tools. We don't care about all of that. We want to check out Dino. That's where we want to be. We want to check out the power and the torque. So right over here. So you guys can see it says no power torque file selected. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to file. You're going to go to new and you're going to say a new power and torque file. But in my case, because I've already just created everything, I'm just going to go to my file. So I'm just going to say open power and torque and I'm going to select this one over here. So in other words, by opening it, you guys can see it's going to open all of this uh, diagram over here and also you're on the side. So what you want to do then is you want to go back to file. You're going to go back to new and you're going to say a dyno setup file. So in that terms, that's what you're going to click on because I've already done it. We're just going to click on open hours, which I've already made. It's just for saving some time for this actual video. And here we go. So now it's technically ready, almost ready to go. So we're quickly going to go through everything you need to know. So obviously in this big block over here, this is where you're going to see your dyno graph, like your power and torque is going to be displayed on but we're going to worry about the setup for now so you're on the right hand side it shows elevation and it says elevation in feet when they talk about elevation they mean like environmental wise how high are you sitting above sea level so i'm sitting about let's give or take 5,000 feet above sea ground so yeah if i want to go to this to to the ocean i have to drive about six hours it's ridiculous but anyway so 4,900 feet so then obviously the humidity is going to be in percentage and it's 61 percent at this current moment and then the pressure is 30.27 i just want to tell you guys that sometimes when you do actually like for example the pressure and the temperature the temperature works in fahrenheit so if you are using degrees celsius you actually got to go on google and convert it from celsius to fahrenheit and the same with the pressure uh, because we use Celsius and for our pressure we use M bar. So I had to convert M bar to HG and that's the numbers that I've gotten. So there's going to be a lot of Googling involved. You guys will see. So not to scare you, it's going to get worse. So if we quickly scroll down this tab over here. So as you guys can see here at the top is for the environment. And over here it's for the vehicle. So you have to actually go find the drag coefficient of your car. So to give you an idea, every car has got a different drag coefficient, such as the Audi A4, the S3, uh, Toyota Ego, the 
Fiesta S, well, I did say Fiesta ST, right? Whatever, the Audi S3. So all of them, they've got different drag coefficients. So you actually have to go on Google and try to search for yours until you can find it. So it might be correct, it might not be correct, but the information I found was apparently a person, I see it keeps on getting darker and lighter, I'm sorry. I think it's because of the shirt I'm wearing is very bright. Um, so the 0.28 I got was actually from a forum and the guy said that this is what it says on Audi's website. Okay, so I'm gonna, hopefully it's correct. It might be a little bit off. Obviously the closer these numbers are to being the actual numbers of the car, the better your, or the more accurate your drag results will be. So going over to the frontal area, same thing. I had to Google it. I came down to 20. For the gear ratio, we're gonna skip it for now because we actually have to get the gear ratio of your car. Don't worry, this program will actually help you with it. Going over to the make, it's Audi, you don't have to put it in. So we're also gonna skip the tire diameter for now. I wanna show you guys outside how to actually do it. Don't worry, you guys can see it's 25. This Actually, this software is so amazing. It helps you and gives you the right tire diameter. And then also for the weight, this is in pounds. So technically speaking, this car weighs 1,440 kilograms. I weigh about 70 kilograms. Obviously some fuel in it. I took that big number and converted it into pounds. I think I converted 1,520 or 30 kilograms. It should actually be a little bit more. We can make it a bit more now that I think of it. I'd rather go bigger than smaller in this case i'd rather have less power than more power because it's going to be kind of weird going saying they have got a 300 horsepower audi but you have to take a shortcut of the weight and all of these kind of things so let's quickly go outside i'm going to show you guys how to calculate the tire diameter for this program okay so let's quickly go down so usually on a tire you'll find text like this over here so let's quickly go over it this is the information we need so all you have to do is just remember these three numbers so the 235 is the width of the tire so if we look at a tire like this that is 235 this is your 40 so this is actually calculating the height of the wheel and then 18 is the rim size 18 inch so we got to remember 235 40 and 18. So like I told you guys, do not worry, this program will actually sort out everything for you. It just needs the information. So we're going to go here to this gear. It's going to say we have to connect to the car first, but for the gear, uh, sorry, for the tire diameter, we don't have to. Because here is like a tire diameter section where it calculates it for you. So we just got to put in the specifications. So it was a 235, 40, and 18. So if we have to compute it, it's 25.40. So we're going to go here, quickly close it up. I'm going to go over here, 25.40. Okay, so now we're going to quickly talk about gear ratio. So never mind this, this number over here. We can even make it one. It, it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to talk about gear ratio is we're going to quickly open this exact same place. Here's the tire diameter. But here we work out the car's gear ratio. So you can probably go and Google it if you want to. You're going to struggle. And if you're going to get information, it might not be the right gearboxes. Because we all know that like the A4 B8 model, you get the manual, you get the DSG, the S-Tronic, you get the um, Triptronic one. Uh, so you get like a different kind of gearbox. It's going to be very, very difficult to get the right gear ratio for your car. So how are you going to calculate the gear ratio in this car? It's going to be that you're going to actually like connect the car, obviously uh, connect the software to the car and stuff. You're going to go on an open road. Sorry, all these cars passing by is just driving me crazy. So yeah, like I mentioned, you're going to go on the road with your computer already connected and stuff, and you're going to select a gear you want to actually do your dyno pull in. So for example, I always believe that doing third gear on the road is probably one of the most safest ways because we all know that they usually do uh, on dyno pulls, they do it in the fourth gear, but going on the road doing a fourth gear pull is just crazy. You're going to go to very high speeds. So I really recommend going into third gear when you're going onto the road. So let's say, for example, when you're going to calculate or measure your gear ratio. 
So let's say your car shifts at 6,000 RPMs like mine. So what you're going to do is you're going to go onto the road. You're going to drive by 3,000 RPMs by kilometers per hour or miles per hour. I'm not sure what it is. As long as you're in third gear and you're driving 3,000 RPMs, then you're just going to keep your car steady. You're going to click measure gear ratio. It's going to measure it and it's going to give you the final amount or technically a close by basic amount. So let's say, for example, your car, it can rev up to 10,000 RPMs. When you're going to measure your gear ratio on the computer, you're going to drive half the RPMs of that, which means 5,000 RPMs. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I hope it makes sense. So let's say most cars these days, they rev up to 7,000 RPMs, which means half of 7,000 RPMs. Oh my gosh, it just went so dark in here. So half of 7,000 RPMs is 3,500 RPMs. Oh my word, I'm so sorry it went so dark. So yeah, it's about 3,500 RPMs. So that is where you're going to go and calculate it and stuff. So we're quickly going to go to the road. We are actually going to go and get our gear ratio before we do our pull. Once we have that gear ratio, we're going to just go over here to the gear ratio section. We're going to put the amount that's going to display over here right next to the gear ratio. And we are going to do our pull. Let's go to the road. Okay, so we are currently at the road. I just want to let you guys quickly know that I was struggling my butt off to get it to work. Uh, every time I clicked on measure gear values, um, measure gear ratio, sorry, I forgot to quickly add in the tire diameter. So it actually asks you to put in the tire diameter first. So I also saw with my car, when I auto cruise at 58 kilometers per hour, luckily I get 3000 RPMs. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly do a U-turn. I'm gonna put it in manual mode so long to third gear. Okay, auto cruise at 58. We're gonna click on measure. So it's quickly gonna measure. Oh crap, it's got a countdown, that sucks. I forgot about the countdown, so let's just see. We're gonna give it a while quick. The roads are pretty clear today. I'm oh, not too bad, eh? So there we go, there is our gear ratio. We can quickly go back into drive, awesome stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're quickly gonna go to a road that is less occupied and we're gonna do our dyno pull. Okay, so if we quickly get the laptop, we're about to do our run now. We're gonna go here to the top, it's gonna say dyno run. We're gonna click on it, we're gonna move it to pork and uh, pork, it's a power and torque, and we're gonna click start run. So please do know that if you're gonna do this, please do it on a very safe road. We're gonna do a third gear pull. In other words, you're gonna get your car into third gear, you're gonna keep your RPMs very low, you're gonna click start, and once it tells you now, because it's gonna have another countdown, when it says now, you can floor your foot to the floor. You're going to push the RPMs all the way up till the red line. Please do not break your car if you're manual. Uh, if you're automatic, your car might shift. Just let go when you know that's the RPM that is at its highest reach point for your car. So with all this weird saying, talking, misspeaking, let's get to the dyno. Okay, so we're going to click start. It's got a little countdown over here. Six, five, four, three, two one and go okay foots to the floor there goes the turbo and there we go that was our pool okay so we're gonna click we're gonna quickly just let the rpms drop off and we're gonna click done there is our dynograph let's quickly go home and check it out so my battery of my laptop is pretty low. So it's actually having it like on like a power save mode. So the screen's a bit dark. But what we're going to do is right here on the right hand side, it says the most power is 287.3 horsepower. So what I want to do is I quickly want to go into uh, Google. I just want to quickly convert it to kilowatt because I've got no idea. 287 HP to kilowatt sorry i'm more familiar with kilowatt than hp is that right 214 kilowatt that's not too bad i mean i don't think it's that much i would say it's about 195 if i had to guess maybe 200 i mean i got an air intake system i got the down the the dcat and in stage one software 214 that's a bit too much okay and then let's quickly go back to the app we're going to check out the torque is 
306.5 LB to Newton meter. Oh, damn it. Um, okay, just give me quickly a, a second. Okay, so according to this, it is 415 Newton meters. That's crazy. I don't think the car could be that strong, right? Look, I'm pretty upset about the torque. I, thought it, I, I wish that the torque was a little bit more though, because I think the car stock standard is 350 uh, Newton meters of torque. So it got about 65 gains of torque, which is not bad. It's actually not bad now that I think about it. And then that's actually really, really not bad. And then 306.5, um, okay, well, sorry. And then it's 214 kilowatt. I don't believe that kilowatt though. That is a little bit too much. But if we look at the graph, you can see I've accelerated over here. Uh, we can actually check all the bubbles. All of these humps you guys are seeing is technically the road. Every time the car just bounces a bit, it causes it to be like uh, not a proper smooth curve. So yes, I do know that some dinos can actually like ignition retardation and weird kind of stuff and that it can also do these humps, but not as bad as these humps. So let's really see, this was the highest at 306. Here's the torque at, oh sorry, this is the kilowatt at 287, 284, and then obviously the highest torque of a year. So I think that if we could have like rather just made a straight line, it would have gone a little bit up till maybe about, let's say 290 and come back down. I think this is a little bit too much. It feels extreme. It feels that this car, for the quarter mile times it does, we also got to keep in mind about the weight and stuff. Yeah. So the only way we can actually confirm if this is legit or not is if I take it to a real dyno. So I think that will probably be one of my next steps to see how far they are actually off. But anyway, guys, we're going to drop this video right over here. Let me just quickly stop this. You know, before the battery die and I lose all that footage. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this dyno tool. If it's something you guys are interested in, your opinion. I would love to hear it, even though I know most of the people is going to say that it's inaccurate, it's not true, and all of these things, which I probably agree with. That's why I'd say that my numbers feels a little bit too extreme. It feels that it's too much than what it's supposed to be. Uh, even though, as far as I'm aware, all the information I've put in is correctly. If it's wrong, you also have an A4, S4 or whatever, and I've done something wrong, please let me know in the comments as well, because maybe someone out there is watching that also use an OBD2 Dino tool, if I can call it that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know. Sorry, I'm asking you guys so many questions here. If you'd like to see some Dino comparisons between like, my stock air intake, a normal air intake, maybe a DCAT or a non-DCAT, a normal downpipe and stuff like that. Let me know in the comments if you guys got any ideas which, uh, which you would love to see uh, being downloaded. Let me know. I'd really try to, I would love to try a few different things out. But anyway, guys, let's drop this video over here. I do hope that this helped you. Uh, if it did consider you on getting one or not, I would say get one. It's pretty darn cool. I mean, it, it can do a bunch of things as well. Anyway, guys, thank you. Sorry for talking so much. I love talking. I'm a I'm a nerd when it comes or well uh like yeah, I go on like a nerd when it comes to stuff like this. I just absolutely love it. Anyway, guys, if you would love to see any similar video, hit any icon on the screen. If you'd love to support the channel, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. And I'll see all of you legends in my next video. But for now, peace out.